I got a request to do problem number 13 from chapter 6. And this problem exactly matches what we did in class. And going over this problem will actually match and answer a lot of the questions that came up on the sheets that you handed in at class about what your questions were after doing the graphing exercise. The two most common questions I got from the in-class exercise were what is an LB plot? And how do you figure out KM and Vmax? from where we ended in class. So the class activity, there's a continuation of it posted under the weekly problems. So it takes you from the graph of product versus time to the graph of substrate concentration versus initial velocity. And that can allow you to do the line weaver berg plot, where it's just the inverse. And that allows you to exactly identify numbers for Km and Vmax. So that's the purpose of the LB plot, is it lets your data form a straight line so that your intercepts will inform you of what your numbers are for your Km and your Vmax. And your Km and Vmax are going to be particular to that enzyme and that reaction. So they're like characteristics. In the solutions manual for this problem, it refers you to box 6-1 of your textbook. So there's also a reference for you there if you'd like to go to get more information. So in this problem you're given the initial velocities, you're given oh sorry, you're not given initial velocities, you are given your substrate concentration, and the product formed. So for example, when you put in 1.5 millimolar of substrate, you got 0.21 micromole of product per minute. If you use 2.0 millimoles of substrate, you formed 0.24 micromole per minute. So these numbers here provide the initial velocity for you. So if you make 0.21 micromole per minute, that's your initial velocity. Likewise, 0.24 micromole per minute. So the difference between this problem and the one in class is that in class I didn't give you the number micromole per minute. I didn't give you the velocity. I asked you to calculate that from the concentration of product over the time interval. But in this problem, they do that for you. So you go on and you do write down the initial velocity at each substrate concentration. Then you just take the inverse and make that into a column. And likewise, you make a column out of the inverse of the substrate. 
Now this allows you to do the line weaver burke plot. The line weaver burke plot is 1 over substrate concentration versus 1 over initial velocity. This will be on the x-axis. This will be on the y-axis. Remember, the variable you control or time, for example, would be on the x-axis. And on the y-axis is the thing that you measure. So remember from other classes, you probably learned about independent versus dependent variables. So time, for example, always goes on the x-axis. So this is your line weaver burke plot. And as I mentioned, that it puts your data into a straight line when you plot 1 over velocity versus 1 over substrate concentration. And that way, you can pull out Km and Vmax from your graph. And that's because the x-intercept is minus 1 over Km. The y-intercept is 1 over Vmax. So you draw a straight line through your data points, and then you see where your line intersects the two axes, and that is your 1 over Vmax and 1 over negative 1 over Km, and then you can pull out Km out of that number and Vmax out of that number. So this is very much like the continuation of the in-class problem that I posted on Canvas for you to do. And the solutions are there as well, and it is fully graphed. If you have any questions, please continue to post them on Piazza.